Hey. The sermon is entitled, Surrender to God and Joy Will Overflow. Can we all say that, please? Surrender to God. Surrender to God. And joy will overflow. And joy will overflow. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that all of us who have gathered here to physically come out here to worship service this afternoon and also for those who will be watching this online to be filled with God's overflowing love and grace. Amen. I have a story to tell. A 70-year-old grandfather went to the hospital for a medical checkup. And this grandfather told the doctor that he was in good shape, that he was doing well, that he was healthy. And he said at night that he went to the bathroom often. Then he added, Doctor, I must have been blessed by God so much. You know, it's amazing how God knows my needs. And he knows that my eyes are not good. So when I open the bathroom door, he turns on the lights. And when I and he turns off the lights when I'm done with doing my business. And hearing these words, the doctor called the grandmother, the grandfather's wife, and says, the doctor says, your husband's test results are good, but he said something strange to me that bothers me. He said, when he uses the bathroom at night, God turns on the light and he turns them off. Then the grandmothers said out loud, do you know what she said? I am <laughs> This old man. He must have peed in the refrigerator again. <laughs> yeah. no, open, lights come on. <laughs> and the grandfather thought he had received a great blessing at an old age. Dear congregation, is there anyone in this room who doesn't like to be blessed? Everyone is eager to be blessed. Who doesn't think it would be nice if their life was full of blessings? If our lives prospered, if our lives were full of joy, even if a small thing is a blessing, we will choose it. We will choose that blessing without any hesitation at all. Dear church, even though not all of us are physically all here today, I am assured that you made the right choice to be here in this worship sanctuary, and also you made the right choice to tune into the service online. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless you to go on forward to experience the grace and the blessings of God in the Word of God today. Today, we are dealing with the text where God's blessings are proclaimed. And in the middle of the Bible text, we can see how we can live while enjoying God's blessings and grace. So first, let us all look at verse 14 together. Shall we all read verse 14 together? Ready, go. Do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you today, to the right or to the left, following other gods and serving them. Amen. The condition for enjoying God's blessings are recorded right here. What is it? It is a life that regards the Bible to be the true Word of God. And God promises 
to fill those who regard the Bible as the Word of God with overflowing blessings and grace. So, how do we enjoy the blessings that appear in verses 7 through 13? You can enjoy it with the words of verse 14 that we have just read. The words of Deuteronomy are a message to the new Israelites. Everyone, even though God promised to pour out his blessings, what the Israelites did when they entered the land of Canaan, they served foreign gods. They served Baal and Asherah, which were foreign, small, letter G-O-D, gods. Even though God offered to pour out his great blessings and grace, they served Baal and Asherah. Dear congregation, today the message is not complicated at all. In fact, it is very simple. It is a promise that God will be with those who fear Jehovah with God's limitless blessings. And I pray in the name of our Lord that God's blessings in today's texts will be fulfilled to all of you who are participating in our worship service off and online. At this time, with the fear of God, in our hearts. In today's text, God was very aware of the situation in the land of Canaan. Situations that could make them fall to the left or to the right. The various pleasures and ecstasies that the Gentile gods offered to give. The land was full of such things. But God tells to fear and to trust Him. This is the essence of the words of Deuteronomy. Why did God declare Deuteronomy? It means to enter the land and fear God. Do not serve any other gods. That is the whole story of Deuteronomy. So, let's take a look at what kind of blessing is are granted to those who fear and trust Jehovah. First, let us all take a look at verse 7 together. Shall we read it together? Ready? Go. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. Amen. The Bible clearly states that when we fear God and obey His words, He makes us overcome our enemies. It is said that the enemies here came to fight you in one direction, but they run away in seven different directions. Today's text tells you that when your adversaries come, and they are organized very craftily and kindly, but they are completely defeated and shattered by God. Living in the world, we get to meet all kinds of different people, don't we? And some of the people we meet are good, and some of the people are not so good. good. And some are just sheer evil. How good would it be to only meet people who are good to you and benefit you? However, we do not always meet good people. We sometimes meet people who hurt us, slander us, defame us, backstab us. Also, there are times when Satan becomes our enemy and attacks us directly. He enters our hearts and minds and makes us spiritually and mentally troubled. 
But in today's text, it tells us clearly. It is said that those who fear Jehovah and obey the words of God are blessed to overcome their enemies. Dear congregation, who has made the world and everything that is in the world? Who has control over the power of death and even the power of curse? Who broke the power of Satan? Our Lord did that. He cut off all the curses of death and death on when he hung on the cross of Calvary for us. And the Bible clearly tells us that when we go forward in fearing, trusting, relying upon the Lord, the evil enemy will flee. Amen. So oppose the devil. Then we can avoid calamity. Draw close to God. Everyone, we ourselves do not have the power to resist the devil. However, please believe that we can defeat evil enemies with the power of the blood of Christ when we rely upon the Almighty and the powerful and the limitless Lord. Let's read Psalm 44, 5. If you have the, the script, let's read it together. Through you we push back our enemies, through your name, we trample our foes, and you being God. So dear sisters and brothers in Christ, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you and I will be victorious over all our enemies as we live today. Amen. Secondly, God allows those who fear God to bear fruit abundantly. Amen. Please repeat after me. Bear fruit abundantly. Bear fruit abundantly. Amen. Amen. Let us all read verse 8 together of Deuteronomy. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hands to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he is giving you. Is there anyone in here who thinks, well, pastor, this is obvious. Well, while looking at the contents of today's text, you may think that it is natural for you to reap what you have first sown. However, if you think about it, on the other hand, just because you work hard doesn't mean that you will reap all of the benefits of your hard work. For example, no matter how hard and with how much sweat a farmer works from early in the morning to late in the evening, from spring all the way to autumn, no matter how much effort and care was put into, when there is a flood or a drought, all that hard work, work ends in vain. Likewise, in the world that we live in, there are many people who work hard, but they don't all get to bear the fruit of their work. And especially with the ongoing pandemic, there are businesses that are dying. There are bosses and employers who cannot pay the monthly or weekly salary to their employees. And with the corona's, coronavirus's impact on the economy and the revenues, it is really hitting us hard, as many of us even here are suffering. We might have saved a lot of money in the bank, only to have spent it all on family hospital expenses. Those things are all possible. Of course, it is our proper duty for us to work diligently. But we all know 
that hard work and hard labor don't always pay off. So, we get to realize that if you are not the one who are blessed by God, <clears throat> you cannot receive the fruits of your labor. If Jehovah does not build the house, the labor of the builder is in vain. And if Jehovah does not protect the city, the watchman's sleepless, sleepless nights are also in vain. Dear congregation, brothers and sisters in Christ, I hope that you remember that God is the one who makes your life filled with the abundance and joy. There is nothing you can reap because you are good. God must help. Dear congregation, Thus, I pray in the name of our Lord that we would experience God's grace and reap abundantly, tremendously, extravagantly in our lives. The third blessing is found in verse 9. Shall we all read verse 9 together? The Lord will. The Lord your God and walk in obedience to Him. The third blessing that God gives us for us to become is for us to become a holy people. Please, shall we say that together? Become a holy people. Become a holy people. Amen. There is no greater blessing than to become a holy people of God. Why are the king's children treated so well? Well, it's because they are the children of the king. Even if two children who are very similar and others find out that one of them is the king's child. The two, two children will be treated differently. This is because the child is the child of the king. It says that you will become a holy people who are called by Jehovah's name in the Bible scripture today. Where can you find a greater blessing than being God's holy people? become sons and daughters of the King. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, there is no such greater blessing than this. God proclaims that He will make us to be a nation as He has set us apart. What blessings are given to God's own people? First of all, He takes responsibility over us. You see, God takes care of each and every one of His people. Why? Because they belong to God. It means that God will be responsible. It means that God will be responsible for the smallest, littlest detail of your life. Your future. Your job. Your family. For those of us who are single, your future spouse. Your salvation family salvation, healing of the sick, and God will be responsible for all of this. Dear brothers and sisters, looking at the Israelites, they entered the land of Canaan and showed the Gentiles that God was responsible for them. Everyone, I want our lives to overflow with such grace and blessing. We are the people of God, and God will be responsible for us. So let us hold steadfast unto this fact. If we fear Jehovah God, He will make us His people, His holy people, as witnesses of God's greatness in the world. 
In the name of the Lord, I bless you to be triumphant, to be victorious with God's grace today. There was a boy who was born in a difficult, poor family environment, but he worked hard. And no matter how a difficult situation the boy was in, he thought that if he believed in God and lived faithfully, that he would surely succeed. And the boy didn't just think, think this, he lived his life this way. And even though he was very poor, he made sure to keep on tithing, giving 10% of all his earned money. And he did his best, even if he did a little chore to earn little money and worked hard believing that he had something to learn from every situation. At first, it seemed that this effort did not produce anything. Some people had told him to save up his money rather than to give tithe. However, when he turned 30, he founded a food ingredient company called Mobile Lunch. And soon after that, he founded a company called Dunkin' Donuts. He took care of his company and it went on to become a global brand. Dunkin' Donuts founder Rosenberg said this at his 72, 72nd birthday party. This is what he said. I was poor and I couldn't learn. However, God always made up for my shortcomings. I believe that success is not in knowledge but in attitude. The belief that they will be God's will in everything. The act of putting it into practice. The answer to all our life and the way of success is right there. Do things with the fear of God. So we want to pray like this. Please Repeat after me. Lord, Lord give, me the heart give me the heart to do my best, to do my best, even, best. even in hardships. Even in hardships. Amen. Amen. Trust and rely on God who will do His best even in the worst situations. Regardless of the craze the fad for early education and gifted education here in Korea. Some people have entered prestigious American universities without any private education. There was an A student. At the time, he entered the science gifted school, and he was in charge of the student council when he was in high school. And at the graduation ceremony, he was a 20-year-old student who received the Minister of Science and Technology and the Deputy Prime Minister Award. You see, he grew up. Do you know how he grew up? Not receiving extra study care, not going to those privatized educational institutes, but he grew up up receiving a special Christian education from his mentors, his parents. His father was an ordinary office worker and a full-time housewife was his mother's job. And his mother educated him around the harmonious growth of intelligence, personality, and spirituality according to the Bible. The first thing his parents taught him was to read the Bible and they taught him a life of prayer. And after graduating from a prestigious university in the United States, he didn't think he was a gifted person. He was very humble and just believed that God had lent him wisdom. Whenever educational policy changes, Korean parents are very 
very apt to be verge of being alert. There is still a strong co consensus that my child should be superior than other children. And that we value academic education rather than ability. The study method to satisfy parents' greed rather than finding their own purpose of study not only darkens the future of children, but it also prevents the discovery of the creative talents that God has in store for us. God gave Solomon wisdom to give glory to God through righteous judgment. When we fear God with a humble heart, and when we are not proud of being superior to others, God will raise us up as great talents in the world like Solomon. Amen. Fear God, which is the foundation of knowledge. So there you have it. Let us fear God. Let us bear fruit abundantly. Let us become his holy people. Let us never give up living with the standards of God. And God will surely bring us to the joy that he has for us as we will be able to say, surrendering to God, surrendering to God was the best thing we have ever done.